Welcome to SFA, Some Fun Art. Are we ready to get going? I think so. But in the meantime, let's kind of center ourselves and let's get ready to kind of just get in the right place for art today. So I brought my singing bowl. You have to be very quiet and I'm going to play it. Welcome to Some Fun Art. Let's get going. Well, welcome to my art studio and our lesson today sitting at my table. This is a nice quote by Salvador Dali. A true artist is not one who is inspired, but one who inspires others. So today we're going to be studying a form of art called surrealism. And there's two artists that we're going to be studying. One is Salvador Dali, and the other is Rene Magritte. They both were considered artists of surrealism. And we see the word real in that name. And so the way surrealism is often described in their art is that there were mysterious objects or familiar objects that have been oddly changed. So that's going to be our job today. We're going to have a lot of fun. So before I show you what we're going to do today, I thought we would be visual thinkers and we would look at both Salvador Dali and Rene Magritte's art. This is probably one of the most famous pieces of art by Salvador Dali. I'll hold it up so that you can see it. You've all been visual thinkers for many years now. And I'd like you to ponder this painting. It's much bigger than what it looks like here in, in, in the museum or the gallery. But I want you to ponder it and I want you to look at it as visual thinkers and I want you to think about the things that you see. So right now your teacher will turn off this video and we'll be able to have some time to talk about some of the things that we see. Okay so it was determined we saw a lot of interesting things here. The melting clocks. This looks like a the back of a clock that has ants on it. Perhaps this is an eyelid with eyelashes. Um, Salvador Dali's painting, The Persistence of Memory, was painted in 1933, a long time ago now. But his idea was that there was um, often things that maybe didn't appear as, they, as we thought they would. Notice the horizon line with the mysterious um, horizon line that perhaps is supposed to be here? Does it just go all the way back? Very interesting. I'd like to spend more time on it, but we can't. So I want to go to another painting here. And again, this is considered one of his pieces of work that's called Soft Self Portrait. And as visual thinkers, I'd like you to also look at this piece. And we'll stop the video. So in determining some of the visual thinking that you guys did, you saw, I know, a mustache that looked a little interesting. You saw these interesting little crutches everywhere, holding up his chin, holding up his eyes, holding up his nose, holding up his face. Because remember, it's a soft self-portrait. So the notion is that this was probably Salvador Dali because he was known to always 
have quite a mustache. Salvador Dali was born in Spain, but he came to America at some point, and he actually um, worked with Walt Disney for a little while, so that's kind of a nice connection. He spoke Spanish and he spoke English. So our next artist that we're going to discuss is René Magritte. Now he spoke French and he was from Belgium. This is one of his famous paintings, and if you notice it as a visual thinker, you probably came up with the conclusion that the face is covered by an apple, and that he's wearing a suit, and he's got this fun little bowler hat on. Well, the story behind this painting is that he kind of wanted to think of man, or perhaps woman, too, as being an everyday man or an everyday woman. Now we look at his work here and he did repeat a lot of the same imagery. Here we have an image where it looks like it's raining. That would be a realistic thing. But in fact, it's raining a bunch of René Magritte's because he often painted himself as the everyday man, always wearing the dark suit, always wearing the dark uh, bowler hat. Here's another image, the dark bowler hat, but instead of the apple, it's the bird. And this is considered the dove and the bird of peace. Okay, so right now, I'd like to go into what we're going to actually do for our art today. Today, we're going to draw something that represents maybe something that's going on in our life right now. Notice around the drawing here, I have created a window because many of us now are sheltering in place and our real lives have been kind of put on hold. And so it would be okay to use the word surreal because we're not able to get together with friends, go to birthday parties, even go to school. So looking from our home sheltering in place and looking out the window we're we can see real things but let's change them up your drawing will not look exactly like mine unless you want to do direct drawing and follow what i'm doing i'm going to give you a lot of openness you can do whatever you want but notice we have here a salvador dolly clock with a little ant on it Notice here's a key that's burning up. That would be a Rene Magritte image. Here we have an umbrella with water on the top. Here we have a crutch holding up an eye, the crutch from Salvador Dali. The eye would be like Rene Magritte. I made a dove, but put a bowler hat on it. Here's the moon with a funny face, but it also has a Salvador Dali mustache. Here's an image, hard to tell, but the face is in the back of the head. Notice the clouds. Where did I get all these image ideas? Where was I inspired? Well, here's a Rene Magritte image with the dove and the bowler hat. Here's a Rene Magritte image with the door opening and the cloud coming in. Notice the beach is on the other side of the door, but somehow it's on this side of the door too. Are real images, but in odd ways. Here's a key on fire, an egg on fire. I don't know what that is, a rose or maybe some paper. Hmm. Here's the Rene Magritte, again, here's his image with his suit, dark suit. He doesn't have the bowler hat, but he has kind of like a moon face. It's just really odd. I like this one a lot. This one is actually at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. So we're lucky we have it near us. And if you ponder it a while, you'll see, as visual thinkers, you'll see the sky has taken up the whole bedroom you'll notice that the images, some are realistically in a normal proportion, like the bed and the armoire. Notice the armoire has the window and the sky in it. But notice, the glass is huge. The match is important. It's huge compared to the bed. 
because Rene Magritte smoke a pi smoked a pipe. Look at the hairbrush, huge. And I think he used that to lather, in the old days, they used to lather the, um, the, uh, uh, the mustache to shave, you know, the cream in order to shave. And then I think that's a bar of soap, but I'm not sure. So you can see the ceiling, there's a crack, it looks realistic, but then there's these images that have been changed. Here's the Rene Magritte with the man's face in the back of his head, which I tried to emulate here. The umbrella. Oh, it's going to rain. The glass of water on top. This one's fun. The eye with the clouds in the middle. So all of these inspired me to do these things. So what am I going to ask you to do today? I'm going to ask you to include things that are like this. If you want to change them up, that's okay. Because maybe you want your realistic images to be different. But I'm going to ask you to follow this recipe right here. I want you to be dreamlike. I'd like to you to include all of these things and more. I want you to include clouds. I want you to have a melting object. Maybe it's a clock. Maybe it's something else. I want you to have ants. I want you to have a black derby hat. I'd like you to put crutches to hold something up. I'd like you to have a landscape horizon far away. I'd like you to try to draw a bird. I'd like you to do a mustache on something. It doesn't have to be a human being. And if you want, you can do flies which I don't think I've put on this yet, but I certainly can. Let's see, where will I put a fly? Maybe I'll put the fly right here. That to me looks enough like a fly. So how are we gonna start off? I'm gonna show you that right now. So I'll put this away and I'm going to take out a new piece of paper. Okay, so this is where you're going to follow along with me and it may work out that you're going to work on this again with me next week. But maybe I'm going to ask you to come prepared with some ideas. Okay, so to make my window, I'm going to make it as big as my paper and I would like you to go horizontal, not vertical. Because I think horizontal will give us a better composition. You don't need a ruler, all you need is a pencil. And if you have an eraser, that's great, but don't worry about it if you don't. Sometimes the eraser on the back of the pencil works just fine. So I'd like you to start maybe in the left corner here, and I want you to just come down. It doesn't matter if it's not straight. You know I'm not into being perfect. And you're gonna go all the way around here. Remember, we're trying to be surreal. Go up. I'm following the edges of my paper. Now, I think we want it to look like a mirror and not a picture frame. So in order to do that, we need to have an old fashioned window with panes in it. So just kind of like halfway between the corners, just make a line that comes down all the way to there. I'm gonna slow it down a little so that you can keep up with me. So everyone should be about here. So we'll continue. So the pane isn't just one line. It has to have another line right next to it like this. So it's parallel to it, but not a perfect line. So it has some thickness. Then we're going to cut it kind of between halfway between here and here. We're going to cut it in half, starting right here, going across. Does not have to be perfect. There's window panes, four panes in here. Aha. So now where do we start off? Do we want it to be like the one I just did? Do we want it to be different? If we were in the classroom all together, I'd be asking you, tell me what to draw. Tell me what to draw. But we're not all together in the same way. So let's take another object. In my image that I did, I did a tree with a, um, with a drooping clock. And I kind of like that. 
So I'm going to just kind of go with that. And I'm going to see if you don't mind, because often people outside their window, they do look at trees. So if I were to draw the trunk like that, it's coming, you know, kind of like off the page, because you're not going to see the very bottom roots. That's the trunk. The roots are somewhere off the page. Why don't we make it kind of big? See if you can follow me. All it is is what we call organic lines. Two organic lines that come out like this. And they don't have to look exactly like mine. Did you notice how I hopped over the frame? And the reason, and I've taught you this, is because it's overlapping. The window pane, since we're looking inside the house, is in front of us. So it's blocking part of our picture. My, my, um, challenge to you is to try to do that hopping over so that we can have overlapping. So from here, I'd like to hop over to the other side of the pane and I'm going to let that branch kind of go up like this. So the tree branches are not single lines. So we're going to come back like this. Maybe we'll have a little finger come up like this. See if you can kind of follow me. This is my first time doing a lesson like this, so it's kind of hard to know. All I'm doing is snake lines. There's a branch there, and let's finish it there. Now, did I leave room for my clock? I think I did. I could put the clock here. I could put the clock here and it would be behind the window pane. I could even put the clock here if I wanted, but I think I'm going to go way over here. So you find a place that you want to put your clock and it's so easy. It's just dripping. Here, you can kind of see this one here. It's just wiggly snake lines and it doesn't have to look just like mine. That's what surrealism is kind of fun because it's like it doesn't even matter. I'm just going to make blinds like this. It looks almost like a ghost is, a, is a hanging from the tree. I think what I'd like to do if you have an eraser is that, and I've taught you this before, you just erase these lines the best you can. Not have to be perfect. I'm not into perfect. And then notice how it's up a little higher than the branch. I kind of like that if you can do that. And then I'm going to make another line. I think when you were younger, we used to kind of like say, kind of like on a car on a road and go, just follow it along. So the clock has some sort of like frame. So here we'll put a circle in the middle and I'll wait for you to kind of get to that point. Okay, for those of you that are ready, others will catch up. We're going to put our numbers on here. We'll start with 12 at the top. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and we're going around 8, 9, 10, 11. And I don't care where you put the hands. If you want the hands to just go in crazy order, you can. Ah, it looks like a mustache. Why not? The hands look like a mustache. Well, it would have to be an upside down mustache, perhaps. Do you have to put 1 through 12 then? No, you don't have to put 1 through 12. So that was my inspiration from the Salvador Dali painting. And now you just have to decide, okay, what else would you like to draw? Now, after our session today, you can add things to this if you want, by all means. I'd love that. But being that a lot of us cannot get our hair cut so easily, although I did cut my son's hair, um, we can't go to the barber and we can't go to the hairdresser. So let's put a comb in here, just like Renee Magritte did, but let's make it really big. 
because the tree is normal size, the clock is a little bit bigger, but let's make our, um, bra our comb really big. And let's take it off the page like it's almost a monster on the outside of the window. You can put it anywhere you want, I don't care. I think I'm gonna start mine here and I'm just gonna make a line. I'm gonna hop over the window pane, get to here, hop over the window pane, and I think I'm even gonna go into the tree a little bit. So find a place, let it be superstar, diagonal, and just any place you want, I don't care. So make that line. And then now we need to do what they call the comb part of the comb, which are the little bristle, well, bristles or cutouts. So we just kind of go down like this. And all it is is kind of like lightning bolts, like the Harry Potter lightning bolts, but really close together like this kind of. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect. But the one thing I ask is that you hop, let these, all the combs be the same size because then we can recognize it as a comb. It's real. It's a real comb. But it's not real. It's surreal in the sense that it's, why is it so big? You see, that's a little tricky going, hopping over the window pane. So if that's hard for you, don't worry about it. Just go over the window pane. And you can always do a little racing later if you want. But notice how I'm keeping the points to my um, lightning bolts kind of at the same length, the same distance. Notice how my combs aren't perfectly the same. But that's okay. It's okay. We can still tell it's a comb. And I think I'm going to end it like right here. So part of it is hiding behind that window. And then if I really, really want to, to look a little more real, I can just erase it right there and then accentuate that window pane again. Okay. There's our comb. Wow. I like to get my hair cut. I know I can brush my hair, but it's getting long. So somewhere we need to do a cloud. But before we do that, I'd like us to do a mysterious horizon line. And I know that you guys did perspective with me when we did the train. So you know about a horizon line. Do I care that you use a ruler? No. So look at your composition and decide where do I want it? Do I want it to be way up here? It needs to be way in the background. Should it be down here? Probably not because it's, I want it to be in the way in the background, far away. So here wouldn't be so good, but up here somewhere would be good. So I'm gonna just start my horizon line right here. I'm gonna jump over. There's my horizon line. I'm gonna make like really weird mountains. You could do, your weird mountains could be rounded like this. They could be pointed, weird. It doesn't matter, just make some sort of mountains and make it look kind of far away and mysterious if you can. Maybe it's so mysterious that it's hard to tell what it is. That's why I made them really small and flat. And Okay, so everybody make your horizon line. Now, I'm asking you, let's see. I asked you to do a landscape horizon far away, got that. A melting object, got that. I don't really think I'm counting that as a mustache, so I'm not gonna count that yet. Um, I still have some things to do. I'd like to put clouds in, and the obvious thing would be to put the clouds in the sky, wouldn't it? You could put clouds inside your comb. You could put clouds inside your tree, kind of like Rene Magritte did. So I'm gonna put the clouds, fluffy clouds like this. They kind of go off the page inside my tree. Now you can decide where you want to put them. And it would be wonderful if we could color these but that depends. We'll talk about that next time we meet. 
That would depend on if you have crayons or colored pencils or markers would be okay. But there I have it. I have these little clouds inside the tree. This will still look like a tree, but now it looks like a sky and that makes it surreal. Yes. Now you could have put your clouds up here. That's okay. Now, let's see, we need to do a black derby hat and I'd like to put the black derby hat, I think on a bird. That's what I did in this one and I really like it there. But I could put another black derby hat here because I just think it's really fun. And I'm coloring in my black derby hat, which I'm gonna ask you to do too, with pencil, just because I want it to be nice and dark. Okay. So the bird, let's do a bird, because I'm asking you to do a bird. I don't think it makes sense to have a bird down here. He seems like he should be in the sky, but remember this is surreal. So how can I do a bird? I'll show you. Let's have him going this way. He's going away from the tree. Um, so just do a little face like this, a little, well, like a jelly belly. And then put a little triangle. That's his beak. And then let's have his neck come down like this. And then his body kind of go out like this. You do. And he has his wing. Let's make him go into the tree a little. He's in front of the tree. His wing is kind of pointed like that. Has two points. Yours might be in a different place, but since mine is in front of the tree, because you can put your bird anywhere you want. So a wing is just kind of like this. It goes back. It's a curved mountain shape like this. And then maybe you want it a little bit like that with the wiggly lines. That's one wing. And then here's the other wing goes the opposite way. So there's the V. And it's kind of behind on the other side of his body. I think that looks like a bird. Pretty simple. So I'll wait for you if you're still drawing that bird. Couldn't you draw it upside down too? I could draw him upside down. So here's his eye. And then let's put a little, just a little rim for his bowler hat and it's rounded on the top. There he is. He's a little bit like Rene Magritte wearing that bowler hat, which was very popular in the 1920s and 1930s when Rene Magritte was doing a lot of his art. Now I need to put a crutch in because remember, that painting that we looked at where the crutches were holding up the soft self-portrait. I'm going to use a crutch on the bird. And all it is is the crutch comes out in the front and it kind of ends up here and it's like this. <laughs> and I might fill it in with pencil. Now in my other drawing I did decided to do an eye with clouds in it and I had the crutch on the cloud on the eyeball the eye. So you don't have to put the crutch on the bird. But if you want to, you can. And I'm coloring it in with my pencil. <laughs> it's like a bird needs a crutch to fly. I like that. It's real, but it's like not real. It's very surreal. Okay, so the other thing we need to do is have ants. And because, I don't know, Salvador Dali liked his ants. So I'm going to just do some ants. And I don't have to do a lot because they might just kind of creep you out. But they're just three little dots. And three and six little legs. That's good enough for me. But if you want to, you know, like before next week when you're on your own, you can put a whole bunch of ants on there if you want it. And you can put the ants anywhere you like. Okay, so let's look at our list. We did clouds. We did ants. We did a black derby hat. We just did crutches. We just did a bird. So we haven't done flies or a mustache. So I don't know. I kind of like the idea of being inspired by some of those images that I showed you. 
So I'd like to do a big moon or sun. And so I'm going to put it like here. That's such an obvious realistic drawing. Someone would do this, this moon or sun. But what's not obvious is that we would put a face in it. Notice how I don't want to have both eyes. It's kind of like only part of the ball of the moon or the sun. Eyebrows. Make it look like that. You could even bring these. Bring this down and make a funny nose like this. We've done self-portraits before and portraits so you kind of know that look. It's real, but it's kind of not real. So let's make a big Salvador Dali mustache. Salvador Dali wanted to be famous, so he did outrageous things. Part of being outrageous was having a funny mustache that curled up like that. Waves, one, two, three, another wave here, another wave here. We've done lips like that before. <laughs> Is it a moon or a sun? If you want to put rays on it for a sun, you can. To look at, to have it look mysterious, maybe you might want to have the, the rays like kind of melting. Like they're coming down. Notice how I had it. I guess I could have it in front of the landscape. Why not? Everything's surreal. Don't have to do it that way, but if you want. If you want it to be a sun and you want to make it look surreal, it almost looks like it's hair coming down off the sun. So let's put a little fly. Like a fly would go to the sun. Here's a couple wings. I think that's enough for a fly. I don't know, maybe a couple little legs here, antenna there. Okay, mustache flies. I think we've done everything. So this is where you might want to do some other things that you really like. Maybe you want to have, draw a little friend poking up. You know your little friend is trying to see you, but can't really come in. Here's his ears. And we can't see his nose and mouth because he's going to be wearing a mask. Because these are the times that we are trying to prevent getting COVID-19. That's the pandemic. And you could decorate his mask, put some flower, some design in it, put anything you want. So no words, no letters, no numbers. We're going to, well, those are numbers. I take it back. You can have that. But we don't, we don't want that. We want it to be images. So this is pretty full composition, and I would say it's done. Um, but if you want to add more things that are real and surreal, I can't help it. A bowler hat like Rene Magritte. The everyday boy or girl, friend with a mask. Wow, more than ever, huh? That's like an apple in front of her face with the mask. So I'm gonna leave this image up and I know some of you are still drawing. And so uh, one of the things I did not include and here I have the man with the face on the back of his head. Here I have the eye. And here I did a key that was burning up. So perhaps this is where we might be able to see both of these. Here we have two windows with two different compositions, but similar. And that's the recipe that I'm asking you to do. I'm really proud of you for taking on this challenge today, drawing and doing something that's relative to what we're experiencing right now 
in our homes, looking out our windows, um, and also learning something about surrealism. So uh, I know we'll be able to discuss these images and you'll have homework to try to work on them. Um, but again, we'll see how far we get. Um, I would like to see your art. And so you're going to be turning your art into your teachers. And um, perhaps what we can do is color them. My concern with coloring is that we don't want these images to go away. So if you have a black marker, and I know we've done that a lot in the classroom, this would be a good time to use the black marker to outline. If you don't have a black marker, it's okay. Because what you can do is, if you have colored pencils or crayons, just go lightly with your coloring, filling it in, not scribbly, lightly, so that the pencil, the dark pencil, still shows up and you can see the outline of your work. Okay, well, I'm really, here's a, you know, like for instance, here's a colored pencil. And this is the beauty of surrealism. You wouldn't necessarily want to make, use colors that are, obvious. However, with the blue sky, I want you to use blue. Okay. But maybe the comb would be orange. So I just ask, and you, I've taught you how to use your colored pencil kind of on the side. Fill it in like this. Now you might ask, oh, Mrs. Cherney, can I make the comb rainbow? Well, of course you can make it rainbow. That would make it even more surreal. I want you to use your imagination. I want you to come up with images that are new to you. But I do ask that you have you follow my recipe. So yeah, so you just, you know, doing a rainbow on the comb would be fine, changing the colors. If you're using colored pencils, I think it's a little better than crayon. But having said that, crayons will work nicely too. You just kind of want to stay in the lines as fifth graders and not scribble too much. So here is my um, my blue. So you can change the color of all these things. The only thing I ask, well, there's a couple things. So when you're coloring your tree, if you put your sky in there, I want you to be like Rene Magritte and have the blue sky because that is not the surreal part. We recognize it as a blue sky with white clouds. That's the part that makes it real. The part that doesn't make it real is that it's the sky is in weird places. That's why I put it in my tree. You could put it in your sun. You could put it in your comb. You can put it in the real place that we normally see it. That's still fine with me. Okay, so if you can see the technique I'm using. Now, I don't want it to be on the windowsill, so I'm gonna jump over. And if you are coloring, which I hope all of you have colored, but maybe if you don't, don't worry because your drawing is still a very valuable thing. You know, maybe you want to have the windowsill a color and that would be fine, okay? Uh, you could use any color you like. Here I'm gonna use red, but I guess the best part is that I might want to stay because I wanted to show as a window because we're all looking outside windows these days we are definitely going for walks but we have to stay at a distance and we're definitely staying inside more than we normally would so let your windowsill be the same color shall I say the window panes and the windowsill because then I think it will present itself and I'm kind of going fast but you know you want to take your time and you'll color it red all the way around so it really looks like a window now when it comes to the if this is a sun do you have to make it yellow or orange no you don't you can make it any color you want. The clock, you can color it any color you want. Just don't go too dark that you cannot see the um, pieces. Obviously, I have not finished my tree. 
the bird. You can make it any color you want. Um, and with this face, the only thing I ask is that you might want to keep it light enough that, you know, it can be a pretty brown color, but it's light enough so that we can see the eyes. Keep the whites of the eyes white. Keep the whites of the eyes white. Because if you don't, then it doesn't look like a real eye. And even though this is surrealism, we want to be able to tell it's a real eye. Okay, do you have to do the background here? No, you do not. Will you be coloring every image that you put on here? Yes. Will you be co coloring your windowsill? Yes. So I'll finish this drawing with color and I will finish this drawing with color so that I can show it to you and then you'll know what I expect. If you want to do the background right here, you can. Just have it be contrasting color to the tree or the bird or this. Meaning don't pick orange or blue. You could pick a dark blue. See how that will be show differently than the blue on the tree. Okay, so we'll have some time to talk about this, but that is your challenge for this surrealistic art lesson. So here's my finished colored drawing. Having said that, I want you to know that if you don't have crayons or colored pencil, that's fine because a pencil drawing is very valuable and in a lot of ways it's, it's really very... Um, artistic and I like it just as much. But if you are coloring, then this is an example. In my composition, I chose not to do the background because in doing all my colored images first, when I was finished, I felt that the background being white was kind of nice. And if you notice, I decided to keep the bird um, white, which is the sign of a dove. And, uh, but I did add a little bit of gray or pencil mark kind of for the, you know, like a little bit of definition to show texture and the wings and tail. Um, and having said that, when I look at this composition, I may choose to add some more things to my drawing. For instance, you might as well. I have a dog. I might want to put my dog out there, but I might change the dog a little bit and maybe put wings on it or maybe just have the dog uh, with polka dots or something. Um, if you have a cat and the cat goes outside, you might want to have a cat or you could put a cat in the windowsill looking out. Um, you might choose, if you really like, for instance, to read books, you might want to put a book out there outside that is kind of walking away with little feet on it. Um, I want you to know that you don't have to, after you've done all the Salvador Dali and Rene Magritte images I asked you to do, you can add more. And that would be okay because this is a composition that's going to be filled with many surrealistic images. Okay, great. Thanks for joining me today for some fun art. I'm so glad you were able to be here with us today because sharing some creativity together, even though we can't be together in person, is still really special. See you again next time. Bye. I'd like to thank my son, Michael Charney, for videotaping this and for editing it. I think he did a really great job and I could never have done it without him. So thank you, Michael, very much.